Well, I want to speak to you on a very controversial subject today. In fact, in, at first hearing of this subject, you may wonder, well, what, where's Pastor going with this? But I want to speak to you on the subject of it's not just about heaven. It's not just about heaven. You know, all of my life, uh, I've heard people say, if I can just make heaven. Now, I understand that we have all had bad seasons of our lives when we didn't feel very good about the person in the mirror, and that was our prayer. My God, if I can just make heaven. Lord, if you can just help me make heaven. But I want you to understand this morning, it's not just about heaven. And never in our lives should it be just about making heaven. Revelation 21 says this, Then I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven, and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more pain or mourning or crying or pain for the, older, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. I will be their God and they will be my children. Now, the centerpiece of our Christian faith has always been heaven. We sing songs about heaven. We speculate about the details of heaven. There are even those who have had the experience of being clinically dead and going to heaven and returning to tell the story. These stories are awe-inspiring. Movies like Heaven is for Real has captured our imagination. The good news is, Ladies and gentlemen, heaven is for real. And the Bible account of heaven is mind-blowing. The Bible says that heaven is a place where there's no pain, there's no regret, there are no more tears, there's no loneliness, there's no disease, there's no rejection, there's no sadness, there's no danger, thank God there's no crime, there's no heartbreak. It is a place of life because it is illuminated by the glory of the one Lord who is the light of all worlds. Yet, a close examination of the Scriptures reveals a startling fact this morning. Christianity is not just about heaven. Now let me explain. When God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis 1, it was all to be a part of his man plan. God wanted to create man in his own image, and he would have fellowship with him. He was created physically a little lower than the angels, but yet he was created intricately to be able to have intimacy with God. The earth was all about man. It was created for him. The garden was created for him. This was what it was all about. There was no plan for man to go to heaven in the beginning because there was no death. Adam and Eve would live on the earth in perpetuity, that is, world without end. That was the plan. They had amazing powers of dominion over their world because they operated as the extension of God's authority and personality on the earth. Now, we don't know what language they spoke. Have you ever thought about it? But we know they spoke the language of God. It could have been, could have been what we call telepathic. Maybe there were no words of language. 
we don't know. But they communicated with God. They knew God, and God knew them intimately. Do you know that as far as God is concerned, it is still about that plan? God never had another plan other than the Genesis plan. And still to this day, that's what it's about. It's about that plan. Genesis 1, 26 through 28 gives us a real view of God's original plan. This is what the Word of God says. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Everybody that still believes that, say amen. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. It's not just about heaven. When you look at God's original plan, a God who created the heavens and the earth in the beginning, you understand that, first of all, it's about you being created in the image of God. It's about you being created in God's express image. Um, I love the story of the little boy who uh, was drawing in class, and his teacher walked over and said, What are you drawing, Johnny? He's in the first grade. He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And she said, well, honey, nobody knows what God looks like. He said, they will when I'm done. <laughs> Do you know that the goal of every believer is that? That when we're done with this life, that people should know what God looked like? That they should know what God talked like? They should know how God would have dealt with the crises, how God dealt with his enemies. They should know how God believed in people, how God gave his life away, they should be able to say when we're done, okay, so that's what God looked like. You see, that was the reason Jesus came. That's why he always deferred to the Father. They would try to give him glory, and he'd say, no, 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 the glory belongs to my Father. They would try to talk about his great miracles. He would say, no, no I'm just doing what the Father asked me to do. They would talk about how that he moved so deftly and powerfully and accurately through life, touching those that needed to be touched evading conversations that didn't need to happen. They were just amazed at him until finally they said this about him. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. We saw the image of God. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when we sing that song, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like him, then we have discovered the purpose of God. Do you know that the purpose of God is not just to get you to heaven? The purpose of God is to get the image of God on the earth through you. <laughs> Ephesians 5 says this, so try to be like God. Isn't that an interesting phrase? What are you going to do today? Well, let me just try to be like God. Try to be like God because you are his own dear children. Love others as Christ has loved us. He gave his life for us, a sweet-smelling offering and sacrifice to God. As God's people, you should not even talk about wrong living, any kind of wrong sex, or wanting things you cannot have. There should be no dirty talk, no foolish talk, no funny stories with the wrong meaning. This is not a good way to talk, but what you should do is to thank God. You know this. There are people who use sex wrongly and who are always wanting what others have. So no such person has any place in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And let me say this, when you see the kingdom of Christ and of God, it's not talking about heaven. It is talking about all that you have access to as a believer on this earth. The glorious kingdom of God and of Christ that exists on this planet, on every continent, everywhere in the world this morning. 
You can walk into places like this and the atmosphere is different and the countenance on people's faces is different and what they have access to as families and individuals is different. It's called the kingdom of our God and of His Christ. No such person has any place in the kingdom of Christ and God. He's worshiping an idol. Do not let anyone fool you by their empty talk. It's because people do these wrong things that God is very angry. He's angry with the people who do not obey him. Interesting, isn't it, that the one thing that angry angers God is that we don't get that we have been called to higher things. God looks at you. In, in, in your habitual failure to step up, to step forward, and to embrace the best of life, and he gets angry. He's not mad at you, but he's angry at the fact that you do not understand that everything he has done from the very beginning was so that you could live in his image, and you are grasping and desiring and running after things that are far below what he had planned. So then have nothing to do with them. You were in the dark before, but now the Lord has given you the light. Live like people who have the light. Let me say that to you so that you get it in your spirit. Live like you have the light. Live. Like you have the light. People who have the light do all that is good and right and true. Do you know that some of you are having trouble living for God because you have never understood that the things that God calls you to are the very things that from the very beginning of the world, He prepared for you so that you could have a lifestyle of abundance and blessing that would be above the norm. Learn what pleases the Lord. We're not to live in the image of God, ladies and gentlemen, so we can go to heaven. Let me say that again. We are not to live in the image of God so we can go to heaven. We are to live in the image of God because that's why we are here we are here to be like him. Secondly, it's not just about heaven. It's about you multiplying who you are and what you have. This is what the scripture says there in Genesis. Be fruitful and increase in number. We have been called to multiply and increase in number. Have you ever noticed that healthy things multiply? Come on. Not just healthy good things. I'm talking about just healthy things multiply. I am amazed at how much trouble just getting a football field ready every year is. I mean, Dawson and I, neither one of us are like grass people. I mean, you know, but, but we walk that place and we stew over getting that field ready. And I am amazed that we just have these 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 invasions of of weeds weeds that I would never notice in my life but now they're growing in the middle of our football field and they have little personalities it's crazy and they all show up at the same time and so we think we're doing really well and we've got it cut and it's looking good and boy we're gonna have a beautiful field this year and there we walk out there and I'll never forget Walking out, I said, we'll just pull these up. I almost pulled my shoulder out of joint trying to get one of those things up. Horrible. Healthy things multiply. God did not put you on this earth and give you gifts so you could say grace over your own life and family. Look at me. Come on. Come on, let's sit down at this table and talk. We may as well. Come on. Just get your cup of coffee and pull one up here to me. Belly up to this table because we're going to talk today. God did not ever intend to just bless you so you can be blessed. Sorry. God blessed you so you could multiply. God wants you to multiply your influence in the world. 
And if you're not multiplying, you are not healthy. You say, man, that was a good message. No, 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 no. You're not getting off that easy. You're going to leave here with this ringing in your ears. God, I just pray you'll let it ring in everybody's ears. In Jesus' name. Am I multiplying? Am I multiplying? You know, for years we thought that God was just after a remnant. A remnant. You know, people that were hiding out, waiting for the rapture. A church that meets regularly, oh, that lives righteously, that operates religiously, that waits for the rapture. It's not growing, it's not multiplying, it's not reproducing. In fact, we're shrinking. But thank God, we're just waiting for the trumpet sound. Let me tell you, you are so very wrong. It's not just about heaven. God put us here to multiply. He put us here to grow. Amen. We should be growing business people that are just like us. We should be growing integrity that fills our hearts. We should be growing visionaries that are just like us. You know, the reason some of you are afraid to really get under religious authority or spiritual authority is because it's going to mess your plan up, isn't it? No, I'm serious. That's the reason you don't want to get under spiritual authority. It's going to mess your plan up, and it will. Because this is what's going to happen. You're going to see something better than what you're running after. And what you're running after right now is going to end as soon as the curtain closes on this age. But if you get under spiritual authority and you begin to see something and somebody that you can emulate, you begin to see someone that can disciple you and help take you to the next level, then when the curtain closes on this season and this generation, you're just going to keep going throughout eternity, multiplying and subduing as God has called you to do. Eternal things is why we live. Glory to God. You know, you know, here in the church, we're just trying to get everybody's attention. We're just waving, jumping up and down, waving our banners, getting our megaphones. Small groups! Hey, hey, you want to multiply. You want to accomplish the will of God on the planet. Small groups, everybody! Small groups! Week after week, we just, yeah, 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 yeah. And we walk out. May I pray for you right now? Use that. May I pray for you right now? Oh, that's a great story, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. See ya. But you're ready for heaven, aren't you? But you're going to make heaven. And you are. You are going to make heaven. Don't bank on it that Jesus won't mention some of this stuff. You were called to multiply. I said you were called to multiply. Jesus tells us God's plan hasn't changed. Don't you remember the parables that Jesus told? Remember the parable of the talents? How many of you remember that one? Huh? That's a great one, isn't it? Because this is what's clear in the parable of the talents. Number one, whatever you have belongs to God. You see, some of you right now are under the delusion and illusion that you earned your money. Well, well, you know, you're talking like a preacher now because you don't understand that a businessman's a businessman. And I earned this money. I made good choices with whose brain? And you also don't understand that I got good management. Oh, with whose instincts? Where'd that come from? Well, I just believe God wants me comfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right there in the Word, isn't it? What is that? Uh, the Gospel of Convenience, I think, one and two, right? Well... How about you? How about you, good-looking people? Come on, let's just get all let's get off the money people. Money people always get a shot in the gut right off, you know. Let's talk about you, good-looking people. Let's talk about you, talented people. How many? How many? Well, you think God gave you your good looks so you could waste it on yourself? No, I mean really, dude. Do you think God gave you your good looks so you could be out there in the bars on Saturday night? Trolling for a gal? God 
gave you your good looks because he knew that was going to be attractive to people that you could draw right into the net for the kingdom of God. Don't be ashamed of the fact that you're good looking. Just say thank you and use it for Jesus. What about gifts and talents and abilities? Man, I know creative genius in this church. I'm talking about creative genius. I know. I have been around it. I can point it out. You see, that, that is creative genius right there. Come on, come on. Tee some of that up right now for me, baby. Come on. There you go. That's creative genius. Yeah. It doesn't matter where I go on this. I can get up and sing a song he's never heard before. And he can play it. He can play like Stevie Wonder anytime he wants. Or I could come in here and sing a Gaither song. And he can play, he can honestly can play like a 60-year-old white lady. I have never, I have never, I, honestly, I have never in my life heard anything like what he can do. I'm serious. I'm serious. It, it's amazing. I walked in the other day and heard him playing some of that old stuff. I said, who in the world is on the piano? And they said, that's, I said, it is not him. I walked in. Yeah, I was. Because you know what? He's got an ear, an amazing ear. Let me just point out where he is on Sunday morning. Can I just point that out to you? You know why? Because he gets it. He's supposed to multiply. And here's the last thing. And I know I'm over, I'm over 20 minutes. I'm over 20 minutes now, right? Okay, I, I may go five. Can I go five minutes over? Is that okay? Go five minutes over. I'm, 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 not, I'm committed to 20. But I got, I got something going right now. And I got I to gotta finish in five. Let me just say this to you. It's about you subduing the earth. It's about you subduing. It is not just about heaven. It's about you subduing the earth. Teddy, get your group up here. Come on. It makes people, it relaxes them when you walk out here. They know it's about over. The word subdue, listen, the word subdue, say it with me. It means overcome, conquer, defeat. You know, God knew even before the, even before the fall, in the very beginning, God knew that there were going to be challenges on the earth. He used the word subdue before Adam ever sinned. He indicated here, that's what life's about. That's what life's about. That was his original purpose. Let me just say this to you. Life is about subduing. It's about overcoming. It's about conquering. It's not about quitting. It's not about sulking. It's not about pouting. It's not about isolating. It's not about asking why me. It's not about giving in to the offense. It's not about running from the challenge. It's not about unpleasant moments of life that make you miserable. It's not about waiting for heaven to bail us out. It's about winning right now right now it's about subduing it's about conquering right here where i am hallelujah isaiah 41 says do not fear i am with you do not anxiously look about you i am your god i will yeah. strengthen you surely i will help you surely i will uphold you yeah. with my righteous right hand Romans 8, 37, but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him that loved us. Revelation 3, 21, yeah. he who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down on my father's throne. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 1 John 5, 4, and whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. We need to know it's not just about heaven. It's about winning right now. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise if you know it's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We hope this message has equipped and encouraged you. For current events and other resources, visit ccpeople.com. And remember, the best is yet to come.